this week we're actually trying a new craft. So, I mean, I knit, I crochet, as you know, as we all know, I've also sewn before, I've upcycled furniture, and this week I want to add one more craft to this repertoire of crafts. I want to try and do macrame. So if that sounds interesting to you, then stay with this video. Yes, I've never actually tried macrame before. I've been like interested in trying it um, all along, but like because I already make so many crafts and like have so many hobbies, I was kind of reluctant to try macrame. But here comes in a really awesome thing that is new in this week's video. Um, as I mentioned before, I work for a yarn online shop that is local to Switzerland. And yeah, it's called yarny.ch. And I've been thinking about how I could maybe, I don't know, like make a collaboration with my um, work. And then I came up with the idea to make macrame because we actually have macrame rope in our shop. And this also means that I have something to offer for you. So if you do have a shipping address in Switzerland, then you can actually go over to yarny.ch and get 10% off your next purchase at Yarny by using my code craftykiara10. I linked the shop and the code down below. But yeah, so the plans I have for this video, I will not look at instructions like before. And if I use tutorials, I will link all the tutorials I use down below so that you can go and check them out as well if you want to recreate what I make. Without further ado, let's get into it. Let's use the Lalana rope to make macrame today. This is my setup so far. I have this thing like, it's almost like a tripod, but not really a tripod. It's like an angular tripod, I guess. Um, that I use sometimes like when I film from above when I knit and I just put it in a horizontal position I found like these hooks in my house and put them here from kind of what I looked up You're supposed to kind of fasten these in place so that they don't like slip around when you're working on it So I'm going to do that as well and Yeah, and these are my wooden sticks, so I'm going to put one onto that I have to say that like these were the only wooden sticks available in the shop where I went to so I didn't really look um, that the size was right so they might be a bit too small for the cord I'm using but this is the first time we're doing this it's fine it's gonna be fine okay now that I know how far apart this should be so um, I think I'm just going to take some like rubber bands and then attach here to take it out because it's gonna fall down anyway like attach this here in a way. It doesn't wiggle a lot, so I think that was a good idea. So let's do the same thing on the other side. A bit less secure. The entire thing is a bit wiggly, so we'll see. But yeah, now we put in our wooden stick and I'm going to attach this one as well. I'd say that's pretty good. OK, so the next Thing I'm doing is I'm cutting the rope and now um, I found a tutorial on YouTube I'm going to link it um, I think wait, it's in this corner yeah um, for you to look at it um, it's like a beginner friendly friendly tutorial and in that video the person uses three and a half millimeter thick rope I used the rope that I had and the rope that I have is two millimeter in diameter so um, it's thinner. So I thought, because you know, I'm a knitter, so I get this logic. So if this is thinner, this means that if I were to cut the ropes in the same length, then they will, then everything would look like very long and thin and stringy. And I don't want that. I want to kind of um, adjust it proportionally. So make the ropes shorter. And so I um, kind of calculated the ratio and how long these need to be to be in the same ratio as the thicker rope would be so i'm going to measure them to that length and yeah rope okay so what i'm thinking is i only need to measure one and then i can do all the others by measuring the one that i measured first so let's like just okay i have it now oh, i got my fabric scissors because we want to be able to cut it easily that is fine and now I'm just going to cut the other 15 by just duplicating this length.
Okay, we're getting to the attaching part. So I'm attaching this using something called a Lark's head knot, which I didn't even know that this knot was called this. Uh, I think I just do this. Okay, it's the wrong way around, but I, it, it is actually just this. If you see me looking over there a lot, it's because I have the tutorial open over there. So one. And now we do this 16 more times. <laughs> Okay, so I improvised the backdrop because I saw that the background was a bit busy to kind of show you what I'm doing here. So yeah, this is my improvised, but I'm essentially just doing something that is called square knot across like all of these. I always do it with like two together. So this is what we're doing first. This is not a tutorial. So if you want a tutorial, really go look at the video that I linked that I use. But I think I also, I also think I need to make this like tighter. I don't know how tight things are supposed to be. We are just making them. And then I have to always like make another one of these. And swoosh. This is kind of where we're at now. I think it looks fine. Can't really tell. So now I'm supposed to make the same thing, but like skip the first two and then use like the next two so I'm supposed to use these now and do the same thing again and then skip like the last two so okay how tight do we make this I never know yeah but like um, something that I <laughs> notice right away is like my arms are already getting tired so this is really something like if you have to lift your arms and I obviously have it on a special angle so that you can see, but like, oh my God, my arms are tired. <laughs> so yeah, I might uh, later then maybe shift the camera a bit so that I can change my angle and have my arms not be as tired. <laughs> We're just going to continue now and now I'm going to actually start the time lapse. <laughs> I made the first mistake. <laughs> I was not supposed to make these across the entire row. I was supposed to do something else. So um, we have the first reopening of knots, I guess I want to say stitches, but it's not many. Um, yeah, well... Okay, so what I was actually supposed to do after these two is take the two of these strands and the next two, like not go as above, go to the next four, but only go to the next two and then do the same thing again because we are now kind of creating um, a step. So we're going to go down until we're in the middle in these steps and then I, I think we're going up again. Oh my god, I don't want to make this too tight, I guess.
okay so i opened it and did it again like 10 times or at least feels like 10 times but um i first had this cord like come out in the front and it was supposed to come out in the back and then this side i know now that i did right but yeah also i think like the tension here in the middle looks way better now we'll continue with the next step now Okay, we have a new one now. Now we actually make knots. So let's make knots. Okay, it's called diagonal clove hitch knot. And this one is kind of a guide. So we're going kind of make to make like knots in this direction. And so this one is kind of the first one I take here. And now I'm going to just make knots with this one and bring it in. Mm. Is this right? I think it is. It might be right, it might be wrong, but since I don't know, I'm just going to reopen it and do the way I just saw how you're supposed to do. So we're doing it again. Okay, so I'm taking this strand and I'm leading it in this direction. Then I'm taking this one from below here. See, this, this is the part that is confusing. So I'm taking this one over and putting it through here and swoosh and then go from under and here in between and it was not supposed to get <laughs> longer here and um, that was just me no longer pulling tight enough so we're going a few steps back I don't know how much longer the light is going to be okay to work in um, but I'm just going to continue and at some point you'll see a very harsh light change <laughs> uh, so yeah okay my phone actually went to sleep um, and now the light situation sucks but um, we're almost done I made two row two rows of these knots and now I just have to make one more row of these, are they called square knots? Um, tied to this row and I think then we're done. And let me just say, I think it looks good so far. So <laughs> I think I didn't mess up too much, but I do have to say like my arms and like shoulders are burning. like. I think it's also partially due to kind of how I set here. 
so that I can show you what I'm doing while I'm doing it. That I have my arms in like weird angles and all. Also, it's a new motion, so it's going to <laughs> use maybe some muscles that I'm not so used to using in my back and shoulders. So there's one more thing left to do. We cut it, but it's actually done. And now I get to cut it. Now, I'm afraid I won't cut it straight. So I, I'm gonna go down here. <laughs> You're gonna see the back of my head now, but I want it to be straight and I don't trust myself doing that from the side. So yeah, hairdressers just do it like this, right? They come like down like that and then I think that's straight. I hope that's straight. <laughs> I feel like I'm messing it up now. <laughs> Over it. Yeah, definitely not straight here. So maybe like this. Okay, I think now it's okay. I mean, it's not so unequal that it looks ridiculous, right? I mean, I like it. <laughs> like. I think it actually looks nice. I think the stick is maybe a bit like too wide, but that's fine. That's what we had on hand. Yeah, I think it's cool. Like it's macrame and it was supposed to be macrame and it is macrame. So yeah, I do think that's final product. I think it's a nice final product. And I'm really glad. I do have to say my arms are, are still burning like the next day, but um, other than that, that was very meditative and fun and I'm sure I'm gonna make something again. And I also have lots of like um, rope left over, so we'll see what we make with that. But yeah, this is the final thing. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, this, this one was fun. I like trying new things. So again, if you have a uh, shipping address in Switzerland, then do go over to yarny.ch and use the code craftycara 10 to get 10% off your next order. Maybe, hopefully at some point, I will have some like international collabs for you. But for now, um, that's that. If you like what you saw, if you like this video, you can go over to Patreon and become a patron if you want to give me some additional support there are there is lots of exclusive content and some member exclusive perks but you can also find me on my other socials on instagram and tiktok i post quite frequently there is also currently still the tester call going on for the strangle me with fashion top so if you would like to apply to test knit that top you can find the link to apply down below in this video i will link it again and you will have to apply by april 2nd and if i'm not able to include you then do still consider signing up for my mailing list i have a mailing list where you can kind of put in your email address and then the next time that i have a pattern call you'll receive an email and you can apply then again so that's that thank you so much for watching and see you next week <laughs>